continue on. We're getting a little bit closer every day. Um, a couple of things. I'll talk to you a little bit about the uh, progress reports that will come out, I believe, on Wednesday. Uh, there was a technical issue yesterday with Aries, and I don't know if it was because all of the teachers were on Aries at the same time in the district, but something happened. It crashed. Um, so now they're saying uh, grade reports won't be run and printed until today at 3.30. But one of the things that I want to make sure with you is that Aries is your true uh, grade. That is what is updated. Canvas is the platform where you can access all of that information and then sends a notification if you upload your assignment right. But Aries is where you have everything that you uh, have turned in and checked the scores. So it is important, and I sent out an email yesterday, that you check Aries and make sure that every assignment you turned in, I show has been turned in. And then also every score that you have had credit for turning in that the score is recorded correctly. So you wanna make sure that that is. We had generally one assignment that we did in class. Um, and also uh, one assignment generally that you need to do before we meet the next week with the exception being uh, the week of the test. I didn't want you to have any extra stress during that week. So uh, there was an odd number of assignments and that should be uh, what you have in Aries. And so that's what you can check to make sure that you have completed. This week, we'll take a look at circular flow models. Last week, we looked at specific economic systems, the three most popular that we had. Um, I told you not to worry about the uh, system analysis and the system comparison until this week. So those are still open um, and will be open for quite a while. So when you take a look at your modules, module five, uh, remember was the system analysis and then the case study. And so you can see that those are open um, for a while. They were technically due yesterday, but I told you not to worry about them until then. Uh, today, we'll take a look at circular flow models, talk about what those mean. There'll be a system comparison uh, that we can do together and then another case study um, with some short video clips and then just to fill in the answer. On the, um, the case studies, you wanna make sure that you use your school email address as the um, email address of record. Some people use their Gmail, even though I told you didn't use to use Gmail, it's not going to sync your grade correctly. So those case studies are worth uh, 10 points apiece, which is basically 50% of your weekly grade. So you wanna make sure that you use your school email uh, to do that. So go ahead and log into your uh, Canvas and log into this class and we'll go over what we did last week. I'll record the role for those students that are here and we'll get done. So just to make sure I didn't miss uh, somebody that was coming in, no David, right? Caitlin didn't come in. Manny here yet? And Will. Okay. All right. Uh, so last week we talked about uh, the three uh, most popular economic systems uh, that you would find in the world and gave you examples of each. So one thing that I wanted to highlight to you, and I think that you got this, um, is basically this idea that we're talking about a continuum. 
And so when we talk about this, right, if we go left to right, or if we go right to left, right, following the arrows, uh, we can talk about moving away from government intervention to more individual freedom, or moving away from individual freedom in an economic system to more uh, government examples. Um, if I tell you France, United States, Cuba, you should be able to tell me the economic system uh, that they employ. And then also be able to talk about, hey, in the United States, there's more individual freedom than there is with France or Cuba. In Cuba, there's more government planning and central planning than there is in France or Hong Kong. So you wanna be able to decipher the uh, differences between each. But that was um, basically the big idea uh, from that. And then as you look um, through that, we did the assignment generally together uh, in class as it relates to, let me get to the correct page here, right, the system analysis. And so when you go into the uh, system analysis, that was in go formative. Right, and basically just asking you questions, right? We went through hypothetical situations, right? We broke that into two groups. Group one did theirs, group two did theirs, and we did that in class. And then what I had you do, outside of class, was the case study, right? And this is still open. I told you to focus on your test and the other items or other things you may have for other classes. Um, but this was very, very simple. As I said, the most important part here is to use your nine digit school email address so that it ties into your grade. So it's students, right? SMJ, UHSD.org. Um, so make sure you use that email address as record. And then you were just watch these three scenes, right? The Disney movie, the Hunger Games, the late 80s movie, Tucker, the man in his dream, and then talk about what those economic systems represent, right? And then the last one was, if you had your choice, which one would you wanna live and why? So that was it for uh, the week. Did anybody have any questions on submitting that? <clears throat> okay, so um, taking a look at This week, we go to the next module. So this will be module six. This is the first week in the second uh, six weeks grading period. And so uh, what we're gonna do is take a graphical representation basically of the three economic systems. So you're gonna need to be able to explain the three most common circular flow models and those three common circular flow models fit with the market economy, the mixed economy, and the centrally planned or command economy that we looked at last week. You wanna be able to compare and contrast the similar differences between those three circular flow models and then identify economic systems based on the circular flow model. And it's very, very easy. It all comes down to how much government intervention there is, right? And that goes back to the continuum, right? If we talk about Iran and we talk about Cuba and we talk about North Korea, uh, we talk about China, there's a lot of central planning or government intervention there. And so that circular flow model is gonna have more interaction than a market economy would, which just has businesses and individuals. All right, so that's what we'll look at this week. Remember that you've gotta go through each module a page at a time or it's not gonna open up these um, examples for you. So um, these notes here are things that you'll want to use on your uh, tests, your unit tests. But basically, uh, this is what a circular flow model is. So a circular flow model is just a graphic representation of an economic system and how goods and services are distributed in that economic system. And so what we have basically is a, let me divide this for you real quick. All right, is a two-part economic system, right? You've got people, you and I, uh, households that are part of households that need certain items to survive or maybe certain items that we want, luxury items. An economic system needs somewhere, 
generally represented by firms or businesses, to create these goods and services. And the exchanges that take place represent what we have in an economic system. So you can see in a market system, it's the most simple circular flow model that we have in the world because we have two markets. And we've talked about this a little bit last week, but I'll put this on here now. So we have two different parts of an economic system. We have what's called the factor market. Oops, if I spell it right. Right, in the factor market, right, what we have is the factors of production being exchanged to businesses. In the product market, we have those factors of production being put together to create products. And that's what we call the product market. All right. So from there, what you can see is households, right? And that's you and I provide the factors of production. The factors of production, again, are land, labor, capital, and business knowledge. We sell those things basically to businesses and firms in exchange for wages, rent, and dividends. In other words, right, money, right? We get money for working a job. Now, we take money that we get and we take that money and we spend it in the product market on goods and services that we want. And so all this is is a representation of how money flows in an economic system. In a market system, you're going to have no government intervention, right? Individuals are the ones that make the decision. So that means when we move to a mixed system, you can take the same philosophy, right? Same philosophy, and we can put that into a mixed system. Now, in a mixed system, you'll notice we have more exchanges that take place. In a mixed system, we have government intervention. The government purchases things. Taxes are collected. Taxes are paid. There's government-owned factors of production. So you're going to have more exchanges that take place. We still have a product market where goods and services are made. We still have a factor market in which people sell their land, labor, capital, business knowledge to firms, but we have some government intervention, right? We have some government intervention. Somebody waiting there. Let's make sure we got in. Okay. All right. And then here, right, we have a circular flow model for a command system. And let me clear that out because it gets a little bit. Here you can see the most exchanges that take place, right? We have a product market and a factor market, but the government is involved in everything. The government has a say in how everything is distributed. So again, right, goods and services, right? Entering the retail market resources attained by producers, land, labor, capital furnished by households, goods and services attained by consumers. This is a circular flow model for a centrally planned or command system. And what you have, right, is basically at a minimum, you have 16 exchanges because the government is part of all of this. When you look at a mixed system, you have eight exchanges that take place, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So in a mixed system, there's gonna be a minimum of eight exchanges that take place, right? And if we were to point that out, right? There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, there's six, there's seven, there's eight. Then when you look at a market economy, you're gonna have four. At a minimum, there has to be four. This is just the minimum. There could be more or less, uh, excuse me, there could be more, not less, depending upon the country that you're in, right? We've got one, two, three, four. 
Is there any questions on that? Okay. So if we click on next, all right? Uh, what we're going to do is a system comparison. System comparison comparing these economic systems. All right. So the United States and North Korea. So every society needs to answer the basic questions of what goods and services should be produced, how they should be produced, and who will receive them. The ways that society answers these questions define its economic system, right? Um, this says use your reference books and your school library, et cetera, determine how a country answers this, but this was in the notes from last week and this week. Um, here in this part, group one, you're gonna answer the questions about the United States, Group two, you're going to answer the questions about North Korea, right? So who owns or controls the means of production? Um, second box, how are productive resources allocated among businesses and people? And then last is the distribution of goods and social services. How are goods and services distributed, um, et cetera, right? So group one, you're going to do the United States. Group two, you're going to do North Korea. You're going to share with the other group. So you need to make sure that you are doing this. We're not going to have the same issue that we had last time, last week when none of you wanted to participate. So in uh, breakout room one, Antonio, Aries, Benny, Justin, and Manny, you're doing the United States. Amir, Antonio, Areli. Crystal and Tate, you are doing North Korea, all right? And we'll give you uh, eight minutes. It'll actually be nine minutes because it will give you a 60 second shutdown, but three minutes to answer each one. Um, with this, all right, with this, you can turn this in, right? With a text entry box, a website URL or file upload. All right, so when you uh, click on this, all right, when you click on this, it'll load into your formative. It'll load into your formative, as I said, when you submit this, right, you're just going to- It won't let me log into- Copy and paste yeah. and put it in. But basically, it's going to ask you right here what you want to do. So um, group one, breakout room one, you're doing questions one, three, and five. So who owns or controls the means of production in the United States? How are productive resources allocated among people and businesses in the United States? And then how are goods and services distributed in the United States? Group two, who owns or controls the means of production in North Korea? How are productive resources allocated among people and businesses in North Korea? And then how are goods and services distributed in North Korea? So that's what you want to uh, answer there. So let me add the word North since Korea hasn't been together since before the 1950s. And we'll have you separate. All right, so that is saved. Make sure it's open to you, which it is. It still won't let me log into that. Okay. You need to make sure and click and join. Hello. Okay, so a couple of things on yours. You guys are doing uh, the United States, so you'll have questions one, three, and five. Uh, the United States, first thing that's gonna be important to use, what economic system are they? Mixed. Mixed. Can anybody hear me?
Whoops, something's wrong with my, say that uh, one more time. Something was wrong with my speakers there. Mixed. Uh, generally mixed. Um, uh, and then mostly leaning towards market, right? So that's going to tell you it's going to be a mix on, on your three questions. It'll be a mix of individuals as well as um, the government, right? So that's what you'll want to focus on for your answers, okay? Okay. All right. Send me something in the chat room if it is an issue. like yeah so he we can get help um so you guys so are number you guys four are you guys are questions two four and six the Correct. thing that i want to make sure you understand if you're talking about north korea north korea was what type of economic system it's like a government um i don't know like the government did everything right so then all of your answers when we're talking about who provides, uh, who uh, distributes, or who decides, right, you may make sure that your answers start with the government. Yeah. Right? And if you focus on that, they'll all be right. Mr. Okay. Creek, it still won't let me log in. It won't let you log into what? The Admantum or whatever it's called. Informative. It's formative. formative. It's not Admantum. Oh, well, it still won't let me log in. Okay, well, I'll check yours and see what the issue is. So go ahead and write down on a sheet of paper so that you can fill it in in a second, but I'll get you set up on that. I'll be right back. I'll check okay. it. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, because um, the government does distribute um, the themes. So. Uh, real quick, Antonio, you had never signed up for an account. I just put in your no. school email address, and it should send you an invitation from there. I'll put the join code in the breakout room, but you, you want to make sure that you accept that invitation and then use your school email address as the email address of record, and you'll be able to get into GoFormative. Okay.
Yes. Okay, so everybody's back. In the chat room, there was uh, one person in the second breakout room that had not uh, signed up for GoFormative. So those were just for anybody that may uh, need to sign up for GoFormative. Uh, to switch it up a little bit, we'll have group two uh, go first. So group two had North Korea. Group one went first last time. So group two, you're going to talk to us a little bit about North Korea in terms of ownership, resource allocation, and then distribution of goods and services. Um, group one, while group two presents, I would type this in, and then we can switch uh, from there. So uh, I still didn't even get the code. Okay, it's in the chat room. I can help you when uh, we're done with this. The code is in the chat room. If you open up the chat, there's a code there. The code is the letter Q, the letter C, the number two, the letter A, the letter E, the letter J. It's in the chat room. You can copy and paste it. Okay, so uh, group two, ownership. Who owns or controls the means of production in North Korea? The government. Um, the okay. government. Yep, the government. So, uh, the government, okay, is going to be basically the entity that owns the means of production, all right? That means they make a decision of everything that goes on, right? They make a decision of everything that goes on. So we'll put that there. Uh, group two, what did you have for resource allocation? How are, re or how are productive resources allocated amongst people in North Korea? Um, for number four, we put government planning. The government plans how they do everything. Yes, so that two parts, and, and you're both correct on that. Uh, number one, the uh, government not only chooses how resources are gonna be allocated, but how much is going to be allocated. So once again, the government chooses the resources and the amount that goes to production, all right? That goes to production. That's what you would wanna put there. All right, and then lastly, uh, group two, in terms of distribution of goods and services, when you look at distribution of goods and services, how are goods and services distributed? What if any social insurance programs are available in terms of healthcare benefits, things like that? So on the last part, right, distribution of goods and services, after things are produced, what it's asking is, how does North Korea distribute those? It decides, the government decides who, who needs more of what and then they give it to that the more important person. Yep. So, it's like like if you're in the government, you get treated better than like a common person pretty much. Well, that's generally how it works out, yeah. But the government decides who needs the products and once again, the important part is and the amount that each citizen or person would receive. All right? So that's perfect. So I'll leave that up. Let's see if I can move that. There we go. That makes it a little bit better. Okay, so group one, I'll leave that up so that you can put that in. 
Let me resize that. How is that? That looks better. All right. So group two, group two, uh, you're going to type oh. in your responses now to questions one, three, and five, because you already did two, four, and six together, um, while uh, group one presents to us. So group one, when we look at who owns or controls the means of production in the United States, generally, who is that? The individual. Individuals or businesses, right? And we could call it businesses firms. I would say probably at a rate of about, I would say 80 to 85%, right? Individuals or firms at about an 80 or 85% control that. And then when we talk about the government, whether it be state or local, you're probably looking at 15 to 20%. All right, so individuals probably control, all right, or firms control 80 to 85%. Government probably controls 15 to 20%. Um, what did you have for on, sorry about that. Um, resource allocation. How are productive resources allocated among people and businesses? You market every No. Yeah. Really, the, the market determines, right, how things are going to be allocated. So the market determines by making available items to purchase. Right. Right. You could go into, if you wanted to do a remodel on your house, you could go to Home Depot, you could go to Lowe's, right? And you could pick and choose what you want to buy. The market determines by making these items available. Right. And if there's no market for them, generally stores stop carrying that stuff. All right. And then lastly, um, distribution of goods and services and social programs in this country. How is that done? Um, the individuals pay for them and then they receive them. Yes. Most likely, um, it is going to be individuals. Sorry. Generally, individuals pay for items or in some cases, right, in terms of food stamps, welfare assistance. Um, even uh, during the pandemic, we had the issue with the um, uh, unemployment insurance being bumped up. I mean, not really the issue, but just the um, sort of economic stimulus plan that was put forward. Um, or government will help provide for various groups or groups of people. All right. Assistance. Most states have a, uh, a Medicare-like uh, program and a Medicaid program. So uh, Medicare is basically health insurance for the elderly paid for by the federal government. You pay into that uh, every paycheck. And then Medicaid is for people below a certain income level. And so most states have their own state program to supplement the uh, federal government program. But I'll leave that up there so that you can finish. Um, and let's see. As I said, once you submit that, copy and paste that, all right, and then submit that through Canvas. Uh, Antonio, I want you to share your screen with me and I'll get you logged in. Wait, how, how do we submit it in Canvas? You can take a screenshot. You can put a text entry. You could copy and paste all of your text and put it in. Or if you want, the easiest thing to do is because this was in Go Formative, if after you submit, if you just uh, copy your URL and you go up here to submit assignment, go to website URL. If you put this in and hit submit, 
it'll notify me that you submitted it. And when I click on this, it'll show me your responses. Okay, so so for the for the last one, the last one we did like this last week, we'd have to do the same thing? Uh, you don't have to do the same thing. There was three different ways to do it. It's totally up to you how you did it. Yeah, if, but, if but we wanna... still have to submit it on Canvas to get the points. Yes, you still have to submit it. Otherwise, there's no notification that you've done it. So oh, okay. It's, it, if you want your grade to show up fast, that's the fastest way to do it. Okay, yeah. sweet. No problem. Okay, so down at um, down at the bottom of your Zoom box, Antonio, go ahead and click on share screen real quick. Okay. Okay, go to the sign up thing, the sign up tab for formative. And I still didn't get the code. I couldn't find it in the chat. Okay, so I'm going to read it to you right now. All right, the letter Q as in queen, the letter C as in cantaloupe, the number two, the letter A as in apple, the letter E as in Ed, letter J as in Joe. Let's go ahead and create an account. Email, use your school email address. Now, it should be students, right? At students hyphen SMJ? Yeah. There you go. You're All in. right. That easy. Thank you. My pleasure, sir. Okay. So, um, lastly, then, uh, so we'll get you out of here. Um, once that's submitted, right? And you guys had that, which was fine. You turn that in. All right, and then the only thing you need to do between now and the time that we meet next Tuesday um, is this case study. So when you click on this, it's gonna be the same process that you had before, all right? There is a um, video here that you can watch that will help you in terms of economic systems. It basically reviews what we've talked about the last two weeks. It's like 10 to 11 minutes. If you wanna do that, that's fine. I would use your school email address so that automatically syncs to your grades. All right, so we'll go students, life at smjuhsd.org. Make sure you put your real name there. And then uh, the scenario here is you and your older brother are completely different. The summer you had a full-time job and you always come up with ideas to make more money. From babysitting to painting fences, you're always working. Your brother, on the other hand, had a part-time job over the summer and spends his time relaxing and playing video games. To be honest, you're a little jealous of his lifestyle. You prefer to work less, and you wonder if there's a sensible alternative to capitalism. You get online and come across a controversial called, Is Capitalism Moral? Right? And that's what that link is there. So it's going to ask you, what is the difference between coercion and voluntary exchange? Question two, according to the video, how does promoting your own self-interest promote public interest? How do citizens hold large corporations accountable in a free market? According to the video, why are government bailouts a problem? What are some disadvantages of capitalism that are not mentioned in the video, right? Capitalism basically being individuals 
working freely. Uh, you texted a link to the video to your brother and saw a few minutes later, he sent you a link to a video called Inequality is Real and it was created. This is this here. So it's another short video link. According to this video, what are some reasons why income inequalities increased in the year, recent years? Um, the video mentions that a small wealthy upper class does not create a sustainable economy. Why would have a large and growing middle class be an important aspect of a successful economy? The video ends saying that the issues can be fixed. What do you think can be done to correct the issues? And then do you think capitalism is moral? Why or why not? So that's all you need to do between now and uh, the next time that we meet on Tuesday. When you hit submit in this Google form, um, you're going to get a link basically that comes up here. I would do the same thing. I would copy that. I would go here to your case studies. I would submit the URL, right, and then it'll take me to your um, submission once you do that. Take me to your submission once you do that. All right. So grades should be printed Tuesday. I think they'll be mailed out on Wednesday.